All right, so I'm sitting here today with 16 of my 1990s XC race bike collection. And we're gonna decide which one is the best. So before I get started, I wanted to explain how I'm gonna do this. The plan is to do it kind of tournament style. I'm gonna pair two bikes up against each other, one at a time, and we're gonna do a single elimination until we have the best of the best of these 90s XC bikes. Now, I, I actually love all of these. They're kind of like my children. So this is like 16 of my children. I'm aware of their good sides and their bad sides. And we're gonna talk about all of those as we narrow it down. Okay, so what bikes are in the running? I've got my 1991 Ritchie Ultra, 1991 GT Cyclone, 1992 Team Marin, 1994 Brody Flying Purple People Eater, 1995 Scott Vantage 2.0, 1995 Kona Cinder Cone, 1995 GT Tequesta, 1996 Trek 8500, 1997 Schwinn Moab 2, 1997 Schwinn Homegrown, lots of 97s. I've got a 1997 Kona Hahana, 1997 Klein Pulse Pro, 1997 Specialized S Works, 1997 KHS Alight 4000, 1998 GT Zaskar LE and 1998 Klein Attitude Pro. Okay, so to make this fair, I've got all of the names of the bikes in my hat and I'm gonna choose one at a time and fill out this board going down and down so that each bike has a chance to compete fairly. All right, first I've got the 98 Klein Attitude Pro. Next we've got 97 Kona Hahana. 95 GT Tequesta. 97 KHS Alight 4000. 97 Specialized S Works. Next is the 91 GT Cyclone. 97 Klein Pulse Pro. Against the 94 Brody Flying Purple People Eater. Just put 94 Brody. And then 91 Ritchie Ultra. 96 Trek 8500. We've got the 97 Schwinn Moab 2 and then the 95 Kona Cinder Cone. We've got 97 Schwinn Homegrown. This one's going to be a tough one. 98 GT Zaskar LE. Whew. Those are some of my favorite right there. Next, we've got the 95 Scott Vantage. And what does that leave? Do you guys know? What does that leave? That leaves the 92 Teamer in. All right. So let's get to this. So first off, let's get this Klein Attitude Pro and the Kona Hahana. Okay, so this first round of the competition, I wanted to make it completely unbiased. This is going to be based 100% on weight. And we're gonna weigh it right now. I've got my park tool scale sitting on a portable bike rack here. So we're gonna be weighing these one at a time and seeing which one wins. Can you guys guess which one's gonna win? 
This one might be, I don't know. We've got a rigid Kona Hahana and a Klein Attitude Pro. Now the Kona Hahanas were not your high end. This is a Kona Race Light with LX components. Not necessarily lightweight wheels, but no suspension fork on this one. Pretty good components all around. It's got a full LX build, um, which I think is super cool. I love these black LX. While the Klein Attitude Pro is full on XTR, late model, late 90s. We've got Chris King headset. We've got the, the original RockShox SID which were super light also. I think they were like 2.8 pounds for a suspension fork. We've got carbon bars. So we've got lightweight components on this, super light wheels, tubeless also, late 90s tubeless, which is pretty cool. So let's weigh this. We'll start with the Hahana. Actually, no, we'll go in order. We'll go in order. We'll start with the Klein. So the Klein, the Klein is coming in at 22.3 pounds. Klein, 22.3. And the, I, I already know, I can feel the difference. All right, try to get this where nothing's touching. So 27.1 on the Hahana. Hahana was 27.1. So the 98 attitude goes on to round two. And we'll put the Hahana over here in the losing section. Okay, now we need to get the Tequesta and the Alight 4000. I gotta admit, the stock paint job on this Tequesta is like, the colors are just awesome. So, so these two are fairly recent builds. The Tequesta is coming in with a steel frame, which tends to be heavy, but no suspension fork, which will take some of the weight off. It's running a full um, STX drivetrain and wheels in this beautiful blue and yellow. Um, the wheels are Mavic rims, but good entry level components, but not super light. While the KHS Alight 4000, <laughs> it's got light in its name, but again, we're specced out with LX components, which aren't necessarily light. The wheel set on this, so again, our LX hubs with WTB rims, nothing too special. Aluminum bars, stem, seat post. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know which one will be the winner on this one. The Marzocchi, Marzocchi forks aren't known for being light. Um, oil bath is kind of heavy. So let's see does not feel super light. Come on. 27.1, same as the Hahana. Let's write that down. 27.1. Okay, time for the Alight. Will the Alight be light? Um, you know what, I get to pick these up and it feels lighter right off the bat. Ooh, not much though, 26.8. That's a narrow, <laughs> narrow win for the KHS, but a win nonetheless. 26.8. And so the 97 Alight 4000 wins round one. And the Tequesta goes into the loser pile. <laughs> Interesting that right off the bat, the two rigid bikes are in the loser pile. All right, what do we got next? 
97 S works versus the 91 Cyclone. That's an interesting combo. All right, battle of the red bikes on this one. So first up on the the specialized S works, we've got specialized wheels, uh, Mavic uh, specialized hubs with Mavic rims. Actually, it's a Bontrager rim on the front. I think it got swapped out. We've got an XT crank set with XTR components for everything else. Aluminum frame, Chris King headset. This Judy XC fork is not necessarily light. Um, you know, it's got like the carbon lowers, carbon look lowers. It's not necessarily light. We've got a carbon bar. Richie seat post, not not especially light components on this bike, but not too not not too bad. On the GT Cyclone, instead of an aluminum frame, we've got a budded steel frame, and older, much older XT components. Very large, heavy brake. Uh, I I really like the GT Cyclone frame. This build isn't necessarily a super light build. We've got Dior XT shifters, um, uh, brake levers and brakes. This Judy SL is a really sweet, nice, nice fork, but again, isn't necessarily light. So uh, let's see how this, how these compare. That saddle is super light. Those Advocate O2 saddles, super light. Whereas this Salitalia, OX saddle, not not light, but I, I don't think the saddle is going to make a huge difference. 97 S Works, how light are you? S Works 25.1, 25.1 pounds. And the 91 GT Cyclone, you feel heavy. Oh, 26 pounds. 12 ounces. So, no, I've been saying these wrong. I've been saying like 27.1, but it's been 27 one ounce, not 27 point. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to correct that. So this is 26.12 ounces. 26, 12. So all the rest of these are ounces, not decimals. My bad, 26.12. So this was close also. Steel, steel GT Cyclone is, well, I guess more than a pound and a half heavy, but steel, big difference. And the Cyclone goes to the loser pile. The Cyclone's a beautiful bike. It deserves a better build. Maybe we can shave a pound or more off. Okay, what's next? We got the Pulse Pro and the Brody. Hmm, that's an interesting. Now the Pulse Pro, these Klein frames are nice light frames. And this Pulse Pro has, has a heavy fork. It's just a Judy T2. Ugh, horrible fork, um, but I've got XTR, XT, we've got a two by drivetrain going on, not necessarily lightweight components per se. The rims are, are probably pretty light. Aluminum frame though, this, this could be a pretty light bike. And uh, the Brody, Flying Purple People Eater, so with the Brody Flying Purple People Eater, we've got an OG, we've got an original RockShox SID fork, which like I said before, is pretty light, pretty lean build on this. We've got a one by XT build with these Rolf wheels, which are pretty dang light. And this for a steel frame is a pretty light steel frame and a carbon seat post. So this build, this builds a pretty lightweight build but on a steel frame, whereas we've got a average build on aluminum frame. 
What do you guys think on this? You can chime in at any time during this, which one you think you're, is gonna win between the two weight-wise, but this will be interesting to see. This one, I really don't know. I don't know how this one's gonna go. I really love, both of these bikes are awesome to ride. All right, going in order, we've got the Klein Pulse Pro, throwing it up on the stand. So Klein Pulse Pro comes in at 25 pounds, eight ounces. Man. 25, eight. Brody, flying purple people eater. Coming in today at 24.5. Now, some of you know, some of you know I've weighed these when I built them. For some reason, it seems like they fluctuate when I weigh them other times. I don't know if this has got more dirt on it or what's going on. But today, weighed 24 pounds, five ounces. So the Brody beats out, the steel frame beats out the aluminum Klein. That's interesting. Interesting. Go Canada. For those that don't know, I'm Canadian, but I live in the U.S. So the Klein goes into the loser pile. Klein Pulse Pro. It's an awesome riding bike. I really like riding this. Actually, it, for aluminum, the Kleins are so supple. Okay, now we've got the Richie Ultra against the Trek 8500. So this Richie Ultra, 91 Richie Logic Steel. We've got, um, I think, XT wheels. We've got Campy crank set, Coda Diacomp levers, XT thummies. We've got a Judy XC that's from later 90s. That's not necessarily very light. Not super light components on this one. Steel frame, but classic. The Trek 8500. So this 96 Trek 8500. This one's, this one's got some good things going for it. One, it's got this nice um, composite in a way like they're, the the aluminum's glued together with lugs, lugged aluminum, RockShox SID fork, the SID XC. These I think were, they were pretty light. They weren't as light as the original SIDs, but longer travel, a little more durable, but a little heavier, around three pounds, I think. Um, XT components all around. We've got the white, white industry hubs on this one. Um, the rims, not necessarily light. In fact, the rims are the same. I think we've got the Sun Ringlay CR18s front and rear. Oh no, these are the, the Rhino lights actually that are on this. Um, so yeah, we've got, some, we've got some lightweight components, a lighter frame. Yeah, let's see. All right, I love this Richie Ultra 91 steel not necessarily known for lightness but 26 pounds eight ounces that's that's pretty darn good 26 pounds eight ounces 26 eight that's the same as the alight 4000 that's interesting that's pretty darn good actually 26 eight it's pretty awesome. Got the Trek 8500. 25.7. So the Trek 85 wins over the Richie Ultra. Although both, both are pretty awesome, actually. I mean, all these bikes are awesome. What am I saying? 25.7. The Richie Ultra joins the loser pile 
There might be some of you that are pretty upset about that. Might be upset about that. <laughs> okay, now we got the Moab and the Cyndacone. The Moab running a full eight speed LX drivetrain. Marzocchi Z2 Atom on the front. All awesome durable components. Not necessarily known for their lightness, but we've got an aluminum frame going on. Like I said, full eight speed LX build, XT wheel set, and uh, an Avocet Air O2 saddle. Those are light, really light saddles. So, got some good things going for it. Really rides well. The bombers are awesome. That bomber. Oh, 80 millimeters of awesome plush travel. Koner Syndicone, it's running the same front shock, the Atom 80. So that's an interesting comparison. It doesn't necessarily have the same seat post that I had on it originally. Carbon seat posts should win at some points. It's got a Kona double butted steel frame and running a one by. So we're gonna lose a little bit of weight with the one by drivetrain. Um, the wheels are um, a specialized wheel set, not necessarily light. XT brakes, I don't know on this one. I don't know, same fork, same fork. I don't know, they're both around the same level um, of Componentry and bike riding. I guess I've got XT on this one ish. Um, but yeah, let's see. Schwinn Moab. Let's see where you come in weight wise. So 27 pounds, six ounces on the Schwinn Moab. Yeah, I think 27.6. I think that is the heaviest. We'll see how it compares to the cinder cone. Okay, I got the 95 cinder cone, the custom old shovel paint job. All right, come on. You get it in the right spot. Oh, oh, 27 pounds, eight ounces. Just two, two, two ounces heavier than the Moab. That's actually really interesting because we have one steel, one's aluminum, and they're so close. And that's coming in the heaviest now. I guess not a competition you want to win. Cinder cone. 27.8. And the cinder cone goes to the loser pile. A lot of steel in the loser pile. Only the Klein Pulse Pro is an aluminum bike in the loser pile so far. All right, what's next? We've got the oh ho ho. 97 Homegrown versus the 98 Zaskar. Both of these are such epic, iconic bikes. So the Homegrown's rocking a one, the Homegrown flame frame, aluminum, lightweight aluminum frame. We've got the full XT build on this with a RockShock Judy XC, not necessarily light, um, but Easton carbon fiber handlebars. This is race face deuce XC stems are really, really light. And the Thompson C post, super awesome, not necessarily light a saddle. The wheels on this though, we've got the Rolf 
wheel set. These Rolf wheels are super, super light. We're running it tubed. Um, but yeah, this Homegrown's such an iconic bike, such an iconic build on this also. It'll be hard to beat, but <laughs> if there's something to go up against it, it would be this Zaskar. Again, this is the, the GT Zaskar frame. It's the Zaskar LE from 98. Super lightweight aluminum frame. We're rocking a RockShox SID on the fork on the front, which is going to be significantly lighter than that um, Judy XC. We've got XTR brakes, XT shifters, XT crank, and rear XT. We're also running Rolf rims, which again are Rolf wheels, which are super light. And these are running tubeless also. These are an early 90s tubeless design that's just super light. And we've got the Ritchie carbon seat post. This Salitalia SLR saddle is also super light. It even, it even says on the back, like 165 grams. So, oh, this, this is tense. I, I, I'm, well, we'll see. I know what I think will win, but I love these. These are both iconic bikes. Homegrown tomatoes. And this red build out is just epic. 24 pounds, 13 ounces. Is that light enough to beat out the Zaskar? 24, 13. Hooey. Okay, GT Zaskar, 98. 23 pounds, 14 ounces. So, Zaskar wins. So almost a pound lighter, almost. Oh, 23, 14 for the Zaskar. And I bet you almost all of that is in the fork. Yep, that is the big difference. That fork wins out on the Zaskar build. So the Schwinn homegrown goes to the loser pile while it's baby brother or um, husky brother, the Moab 2 stays in the playing. So this is a fatality of the matchup, the draw of the hat to go into the loser pile. And the last matchup for round one is the 95 Vantage against the Team Marin. Okay, the Vantage. The Vantage is rocking an aluminum frame. A Scott Scott aluminum frame professional series. <laughs> We're running a Judy XC, not necessarily a light fork. XT drivetrain all around. Um, aluminum bar stem seat post i think we're running an xt wheel set xt drivetrain all around pretty good xc bike um, not necessarily light beyond the frame nothing super light or super special on this one and team marin we're rocking the Steel frame, 92, 1992. So on the T-Marin, we've got the Marin steel frame. We've got a RockShock Judy XC with that I rebuilt with um, coil springs. This is super plush. It feels so good, but not necessarily light. Full XT drivetrain, XT wheel set. Um, a Ritchie seat post and flight, Salitalia flight saddle. Not necessarily super light build, but super competitive steel XC bike from the 90s. So Scott Vantage, 
27 pounds, nine ounces. Not the lightest, but also not the heaviest. 27.9. Team Moran. 26 pounds, 11 ounces. The Team Moran wins on this one. Steel. Steel wins over aluminum. Beating out the Vantage. 26 pounds, 11 ounces. And with that, the Scott Vantage 2.0 graduates to the loser pile. So the Klein Attitude comes in first place for the weight category, while the Zaskar comes in second, the Brody third, the Homegrown fourth, which went into the loser category. And then from there, we've got lots of 25s, 26s, and 27s. Interesting. All right, so we're on to round two. And round one was entirely scientific. Round two is entirely subjective. <laughs> so this is going to be me, my choice. I'd love to hear your choices on these also. But round two is going to be on the looks of the frame the frame, style, design, everything. So they're gonna be competing just against each other, not against everything, just against each other for this elimination. So to start out with, we have the Klein Attitude Pro and the KHS Alight 4000. What's interesting is these two bikes are very similar looking very very similar colors coming all out i really personally i really love i love the fluorescent on the bomber with the khs and the blue the blue and the yellow together is really good which is a combo we've got going on both of these bikes the bomber i think looks better but we're talking about frames here and i am i am definitely a sucker for the linear fade that Kleins do, and this green and blue linear fade, alligator fade, whatever we want to call it, is just awesome. So for this round, the Klein Attitude Pro really wins out. The fact that it matches the fork, this one matches the fork, but the paint jobs on the Kleins are hard to beat. And this one's definitely a winner. Between the Klein Attitude and the Alight 4000, it is the 98 Attitude that wins out for the better paint job. And the KHS Alight 4000 goes to the loser pile. Loser. Actually, this is one of my favorites. And there are some favorites in the, like the Tequesta is just beautiful. And I really, yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean, the crust is good. <laughs> but the Klein Attitude Pro, so nice. You're a wiener. So dang light, too. Okay, so next up, we've got the Specialized S-Works versus the Brody Flying Purple People Eater. So with the Brody, we've got a purple to green fade, front to back. This is hand painted, not factory painted, which is super cool, but it is not in good shape and it is not, <laughs> the bike's not clean right now. And that's actually because I love riding this Brody. So it gets rode quite a bit and I should probably clean it. Um, feels awesome. Hand, hand paint job with the specialized S works. We've got a factory paint job, but it's in just this striking red that is just hard to miss and just really pops and looks awesome. So this one's kind of hard for me because aesthetically the red just really, really looks good. 
Whereas the purple people eater, it's this custom paint job that's just awesome, but subdued and subtle. And I could feel myself going either way, but there's something about a custom hand painted paint job that I think makes the Brody, the flying purple people eater win out on this one. So the Brody wins on this one. It's an awesome paint job. The reason I haven't repainted it is because it is hand painted and just unique and one of a kind. So on this one between the S works and the Brody, the 94 Brody wins. For just an epic, subdued, subtle, hand-painted, custom paint job. My dentist bike goes to the loser pile. This is pretty epic. Epic 90s bike. Pinnacle of just about anybody's collection. And you, Mr. Brody, are a winner. Shout out to Paul Brody. Um, praying for you, brother. Hope you're feeling feeling good and fighting the cancer. Okay, so next up is the Trek 8500 in my polished aluminum. What was interesting on this Trek, it it wouldn't polish up very well. It stays this kind of milky, milky color. Some of you thought, why didn't I get it as shiny as the Zaskar? It just didn't polish. It's kind of a different aluminum mixture, but it has kind of this brushed aluminum look with then um, green decals on it that I did myself. And I quite like it. I really like the scheme also. I painted the, the shock on this. I did the saddle, but we're really talking about just the frame. And I quite like this paint job. With the Schwinn Moab, we have the stock Schwinn Moab frame. And what's cool about this, this is the way I got it with no decals, decal free. It's kind of a ghost bike kind of has this Black Widow vibe going for it that I quite, I quite like. I think it's a really good looking um, frame. It is a factory paint job. Um, it's striking. The black is black and the, the red is just red and it pops. Um, but for this, I really like the raw aluminum. I like raw metals. I think it just accentuates what, what the bike is really made of. And I really like the green and polished aluminum look. So the Trek 8500 wins on this one. 96 Trek 8500. And Moab, Schwinn Moab, you go to the loser pile. Loser, loser pile. All right, next up, is the GT Zaskar in polished aluminum versus the repainted custom by myself, the Team Marin. Now, now this one's, this one's a really tough one because I took this from looking nasty also and repolished it, made it look awesome. So I've got work into both of these frames significantly. Now the Zaskar is back to the way it was and so is the Team Marin. Both of these I tried to restore look-wise to something similar. Now the graphics on the Zaskar are slightly different for the decals than the original. Um, they're just simplified but the Team Marin I tried to do it exactly the same. I used spray dog bike paint um, then with a 2k clear coat over top and then painted a Judy to match this one's a really tough one because both of these bikes would have beat out some of the ones in the loser pile over there. Easily would have beat them out. Um, they're both just awesome bikes. And I know on the Trek, I said I liked the polished over the color. On this one, I'm going with the color. The Team Marin colors, the 92, in fact, most of the Marins from this era, the, the two-tone that they did, I really like them. I like the fluorescence. I really think this bike pops. 
and it is just a, a cool paint job. It's also one of the best paint jobs I did. Um, it's good. So, Team Moran wins against the Zaskar. And yeah, Team Marin, 92. Team Marin beating out his Ascar. And I'm sure there's some cult, Z Zaskar cult followers who are not happy about this one. Not happy at all. These Zaskars have a cult following out there. And the Zaskar joins the loser pile, which it's a nice pile of losers. <laughs> okay, we are now into the semifinals and we have four bikes that we're looking at. We have the Klein Attitude Pro, the Brody Flying Purple People Eater, the Trek 8500, and the Team Marin. And this semifinals is going to be kind of a combo of scientific versus um, preference in a way because what I'm gonna do on this one is actually compare the build so so when we're looking for the best XC bike build is a whole big part of it so we're looking at all the components we're looking at the frame um, and looking at everything that's been put into the bike that makes it the bike and this isn't just the stock build, this is the build that I've done. So trying to evaluate how these bikes compare to each other. And again, they're just competing against the one that they're matched up with. So with that, this first round is between the Klein Attitude Pro 1998 versus the Brody Flying Purple People Eater from 1994. Now the builds on these are quite different. So first, let's look at the Attitude Pro. This one is very much a stock build with just a few changes, but it's very much a stock build. We've got the Klein frame. We've got a full XTR drivetrain on this. Full XTR nine speed. No, I think it's eight speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. We've got a full XTR 8-speed 3x8 drivetrain. We've got the original RockShock um, SID fork, which is just an awesome early fork. We've then got these Easton carbon handlebars, Thompson seat post and stem, which match Chris King headset. This is just a really nice build. We've got these um, Mavic... Um, cross max tubeless rims and it's just an awesome awesome build made in USA frame it's just a cool cool bike all around with the Brody we're actually running the exact same fork it's the original SID um, front shock this one's running a full XT combo build so we've actually got an XT 10 speed rear i think it's 10 1 2 3 4 7 8 9 10 yep 10 speed wide range rear with a one by drivetrain now these are newer than the 90s much newer than the bike itself in fact quite a bit newer than the bike itself the frame though hand built in canada brody frame xt we've got the nice carbon seat post flight saddle I got a flight saddle over there also. But looking at the spec and the build, these are close. This one is a mixed kind of mod build, but awesome lightweight build. I love the thummy shifter also. But overall, the build on this Klein Attitude Pro, this is a 90s Pro build. Not only that, 
This is specced similar to what someone would have rode in 1998, racing XC. This would have been a high-end, awesome build. And for that, the Brody goes to the loser pile and the Klein goes to the finals. So between the Attitude and the Brody, the 98 Attitude is in the semifinals. Let's see who, between the Trek 8500 and the Team Marin, who it's gonna go up against. Uh, the Brody goes to the loser pile. Well, look at who you're beside, Brody. You're beside a, a dentist bike. Okay, so now we've got the Trek 8500 versus the Team Marin. So the Trek is a 96. And not a lot of what's on this bike was original, but a lot of what's on this 96, we've got a shock, the Sid fork is I think a 99 so it's three years newer but we're running an eight-speed XT drivetrain with the XV XT V brakes and everything on it with just an awesome beautiful wheel set these these white industry wheel sets the hubs are just beautiful rebuilt by myself Thompson front uh, seat post um, we've got Bontrager light stem system three, um, system three stem and Bontrager handlebars on this that are fairly original. While over here on the Team Marin, we've got it specced with Chris King headset, a RockShock Judy XC from around 94. Um, the bike itself is 92, so the fork is newer than the bike the frame, but not inconsistent with what someone might be doing racing in the mid 90s. Um, the handlebar on here is uh, nothing special. The stem either painted to match. The original stem on this was a quill stem. We got a Ritchie seat post. We've got XT um, seven speed going on with the, the shifter pods, derailleur. This is some of the early um, rapid fire shifters and then we've got an XT wheel set so this is a tough one because this is where it starts to be a little more subjective I really feel like for 90 mid 90s which this would be it's a bit of a modded build with the fork on it but it is this would have been an awesome build in those early 90s with that Judy XC fork again with the Trek, this would have been an awesome build also for racing. Um, XT, some cool wheels, cool bits and bobs. The Thompson seat post, polished. This has a really nice feel going for it. But I feel like in 92, this Team Red would have been a, a higher spec and a, a bigger kind of wow factor than this Trek would have been. And for that, the Team Red goes to the finals against the Klein Attitude Pro. 92 team are in. And the Trek 8500 goes to the loser pile. We'll put it with its polished buddy, the Zaskar. All right, so now we are in the finals and we have two extremely beautiful bikes that are beautiful examples of XC race bikes from their day. One from the early mid 90s to mid 90s with its shock and fork on it. And one from the late 90s, just before we go into those nine speed and we start seeing disc brakes on everything. So it's an interesting, interesting combo. And this last one really is gonna come down to my preference but I want to base it on ride performance. The Klein Attitude came in lightest of all the bikes. It is also probably the one that's specced the highest with the, the most plush, lush, and ultimate components throughout from its era. The, 
the team are in is probably a great example of of vintage steel race bikes from the early 90s and it is it's got probably one of my best paint jobs copying the stock original paint job and with the the judy fork on it, it is just awesome it is it is a hard decision between these two bikes i'm curious what you guys would say which one would you like more it might come down to which era you prefer i mean this one's going with v brakes this one's going with the the cantilevers that we saw in the early 90s they're kind of in different categories and they're both awesome bikes from both of those categories some of you a lot of you guys in europe which is funny the marins are really popular popular in like great britain and a lot of you guys have memories of riding those um, i grew up also seeing the klein bikes and just they were like the best of the best the most elite bikes out there albeit this is a later Klein bike. It's after Trek purchased them, but they were still being handmade and were still being made in the same factory in the same way in this Klein Attitude Pro. Although it's missing some of those iconic features that that exemplified the early Kleins in the early 90s, it is a pinnacle of mountain bike engineering from those from the 90s. And for that the Klein Attitude Pro is my top choice of the best old shovel 90s XC mountain bike in my collection. <laughs> and really, I love this bike. It rides really well. Surprisingly, for an aluminum bike, the Klein bikes are supple. Like they have a really supple feel to them, which is surprising. The first time I rode my Klein Pulse Pro, I noticed it and this Klein Attitude Pro did not disappoint either. It is a supple aluminum frame and the combination with that um, RockShox SID fork, the XDR components also are just crisp and fine and it rides so good. So let's put it down. A nine 1998 Klein Attitude Pro is the winner of the best old shovel 90s XC MTB. So thanks for following along with me on this one. I hope I hope you guys liked it. I, I wanted to share with you all all of my XC bikes and my XC collection and kind of go through them all. And I wanted to do it in a fun way. And this was fun. It was interesting to see the matchups. Um, there's some of the bikes that I would have rather put in the semifinals if I had done this myself. But truthfully, I knew this Attitude Pro would come up top. So. Again, thanks for following along with me. Um, let me know what your favorite of all of these bikes are or which ones you liked, what are the things you like about them, and which would you want to have if you could have one. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as I have done with all of these, look for opportunities to give those old things new life. And I will see you on the next video. Ciao.